So this is a story that has a bit of an intro before I get to the point, but uh, let me just talk about, you know, uh, you know, seven, eight years ago, eight years ago, I guess, I uh, you know moved into my current house, and uh, I kind of live far out in the middle of nowhere, and I've got a decent size uh, property. I've got uh, two and three quarter acres, or just shy thereof, and uh, I don't mow all of that, but uh, the front half of it, so probably about an acre and a half needs to be mowed, and before I lived on a quarter of an acre, and mowing it wasn't too much of a problem. It was very quick and easy. Uh, luckily, my sister also lived not too far from where I lived, and she had a property about the same size. And she used to mow, but she uh, eventually hired a lawn company to mow her lawn. So she told me that I could have her, or at least borrow her ride on mower until she needed it back. Which was great, except for every time I went to use it, it either had a flat tire, the batteries was dead, a belt came off. It always took me at least 20 minutes before I could start mowing the lawn, which which made it kind of a pain. Uh, I didn't mind the mowing so much, but the prep to mow was just too much. So eventually, after a couple of years of fiddling with that, I uh, actually gave that lawn mower to a friend. I said, if you come pick it up, you can have it. And I bought myself a cheap pusher mower for about a hundred bucks, and I used that for a while. Now mowing a uh, acre and a half with a push mower uh, can take some time. So what I was doing was I would order about a uh, mow about a half or a quarter of that every week, uh, and I would just go around, and uh, that worked for me. My wife did not appreciate having the lawn multiple different lengths, so eventually I broke down and I hired a lawn crew. Um, and that lawn crew did a pretty good job for the first uh, year and a half or so. And then about a month ago, they switched ownership. And at which point, they just kind of stopped showing up. Uh, I at first, you know, gave them some time. I figured new ownership. Plus, in the winter months, they mow half as much as they do in the summer months here in Florida because it rains like crazy in the summer, so the grass grows like crazy. But it doesn't grow very much during the winter. So usually they only come out once a month. So I figure new management... You know, and they're cutting back to the once of the month this time of the year. So I just uh, let it go and let it go, let it go. And then after um, about six weeks or so, wherein my grass was <clears throat> about thigh high, I was like, okay, I need to give these people a call. So I, I called the owner and um, he uh, said he was sorry and that they would be out tomorrow. They didn't come out. A week later, I call again. He says, oh, I'm sorry, they'll be out tomorrow, and they didn't, and I actually just hired a new lawn company that should be coming in the next uh, day or so, which is all fine and dandy, great. But one of the things that bothered me, besides the fact that this lawn company uh, kept promising to come out and never did, um, is that one of the times I called them, you know, the voicemail picked up for the company, and, you know, played the message, thank you for calling such and such, please, we're not available, please leave a message after the beep, and then it said... I'm sorry, but this mailbox is full, and then hung up, you know, automated recording. And I hear that every once in a while uh, when I try to leave people voicemails, and it blows my mind. It is currently 2018. You're probably listening to this probably early 2019. It, who still has a voicemail box that gets full? And you're running a company and you let it get full, that's even worse. Uh, but it, it just drives me crazy because I, back in 2000. Nine, so a decade ago, started using Google Voice. Now, I know not everyone's a Google fan, but I started using Google Voice, and it gave you so much more functionality. And back then, yeah, it was common. You could only have, you know, so many minutes of voicemail, and you could only save the voicemails for, like, two weeks, and then they would automatically delete. But that was a decade ago. And, and at that point, I switched to Google Voice, and I haven't deleted a voicemail or text since. Every single voicemail and every single text I've gotten since 2009, I still have. I can search through them. I can go back. It does transcripts. I can word search, search by who left the message, by date, whatever I want, and go back and listen to these things. And some people I've talked to don't like that. I, I don't delete anything uh, that I don't have to because why would you? Uh, storage is so cheap nowadays. There's no reason to delete anything. You should hold on to everything and then you can search through it. As long as you keep it somewhat organized, you can search through it later. And why uh, would you want to, like with emails, unless it's complete junk mail, if it's anything from anybody that's a legit email, I never delete it. 
I talk to my father-in-law, he deletes everything right away. And then if he needs something, he goes into the trash bin and look, looks for it. And I'm like, why would you do that? In the trash bin is going to disappear after like 30 days. Why not just keep it, archive it, and then you can search for it later because he's constantly looking for stuff in the trash bin. I'm like, oh, I need to keep my inbox clean. Well, yeah, that's what, that's what labels and folders and whatnot are for. Um, but with the voicemails, uh, it just doesn't make sense to me that companies don't, they, they give you limits still. And it blows my mind that there's still people who use these services because something like Google Voice is free. Since then, I've switched to Google Fi and it gives me the same functionality. I can go back through all my voicemails from whatever and it all filtered over when I switched to Google Fi from Google Voice. So everything's still there from before. I still have everything. And I, I still just don't see a reason to get rid of it. And why companies wouldn't I would assume a lot of these companies might be keeping this information but limiting your access to it if that makes sense because why would a company delete data like that where companies like Google thrive on it that's how they live that's how they make money why would uh, T-Mobile or Sprint or Verizon and I don't know if these what companies still limit you on the number of voicemails you have and for how long you can keep them but it's not a lot of storage for them and that's just more information on their customers they have. So it wouldn't be surprise me that they keep copies. I mean, you gotta think about it. These servers that these, these voicemails are stored on, they have to be making backup copies of them in case their servers go down. So they have multiple copies. So just because they delete it from the current copy that you're running off of, you would think they would still have copies on backup. So why, why are they limiting your access to it? And let me give you an example of how much uh, the, the saving voicemails uh, costs these, uh, these um, companies. Uh, the limit to a length in a voicemail, at least with my Google Fi and Google Voice, is three minutes. It cuts off, which is good because I have had a few cases where I know people who don't know how to hang up their phones. I think I've mentioned that in the past. I have a family member who I've tried to talk to about this, or at least my wife has tried to talk to about this. Every time she calls my wife and leaves a voicemail, it's a 30 second voicemail, but then it just goes on and on. You can hear her talking in the background until it cuts off at three minutes because she doesn't know how to hang up the phone. And, um, you don't want a voicemail to just record forever if someone doesn't hang up. I had a doctor's office call me last week, leave me a 20 second voicemail, and then it was silence for the next, till the three minute mark. I'm assuming that they, you know, hung up their phone, but somehow it was still on like hold or something like that. So my phone didn't realize it disconnected. So it's good that they limit you to a three minute voicemail, but three minutes is the max. Uh, so I took one of those three minute voicemails and downloaded it. And it was just over uh, 300 kilobytes. So you figure it's 100 kilobytes per minute. So that's 60 megabytes an hour, right? That's, that's not that much. These aren't, they're, when I download it, because uh, with Google Fi and Google Voice, you have the option to you know, download your voicemails as a WAV file. Uh, they're not MP3s because they don't need to have that dynamic range that music has. It's just someone talking like me right now. So you can actually use a WAV with a lower rate and still get, you know, you just need to understand the person. but. 60 megabytes a minute. Uh, let's do the math on that. Um, so you figure, let's see, I'm trying to do math in my head here real quick. 10 hours would be 600 megabytes. So 10 hours of data can fit on a standard CD and still have plenty of room. So if you were to uh, take that, let me, let me open up a calculator here real quick. So we'll say uh, 60 megabytes uh, per hour times 24 hours in a day times 356 days in a year. That uh, looks like just over five gigs, if I'm doing my math right. Yeah, if I did my math right, five gigs a year. And that's if you recorded voicemail nonstop for an entire year. Five gigs is nothing. Even if, actually, no, I'm sorry. I think I got the decimal point in the wrong spot. I think it's 50 gigs. But 50 gigs, and that, and that's if someone left you a voicemail nonstop for a year. You're not really going to ever do that. Really, uh, depending on who you are, it's going to vary a lot. Uh, but let's say I get five voicemails a day, and they're all 30 seconds long. There's no way I'm going to even get close to that. Literally, I'm sure that if I took all of my voicemails in the last 10 years, I could probably fit them all on a CD, no problem. And a CD is what, 10 cents? Obviously, they wouldn't store them on CDs. They're going to be storing them on servers. But that, that is nothing to, to for a few dollars a year to have that sort of data on your users is great for a company. I know people may not like that, but it's great for a company and it's great for me to have access to that. Uh, but the fact that they set the limits 
to this day, it, it just blows my mind that when I call somebody and it says their voice mailbox is full, it's just like, how do you get to that limit and why do you still have a limit? It just blows my mind. It's crazy. Uh, and when, when there are voicemail services out there that are free, and you may not like the free ones, but there's also paid ones that probably only cost a couple dollars a month to where you have this functionality. A lot of people may not care, but if I call you and your voicemail box is full, especially if you're running a business, that looks very bad on you and your business. Anyway, thanks for listening. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link in the description. Let me know what you think below. Um, do you think that there should be limits? Do you understand why there's limits on voicemail storage? Do you, I mean, even if you don't, even if you dislike like the whole privacy part of it, they're still having recordings of that. Those companies still have those recordings. So, I mean, if you don't like that, you don't do voicemail at all. But if you're going to have voicemail, why not have unlimited voicemail? It benefits you and the company in that case. And if privacy is a concern, you wouldn't do voicemail at all on someone else's system. So, again, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the Cage. There's a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day.